So you've probably heard the phrase that gear doesn't matter, especially if you like camera reviews or just tutorials. And well, I'm not the best person to listen to about that. I, I love gear. I love playing with it. I love messing with it. So with that being said, we're going to take a look at some of the gear that we use to produce these videos. Now, I know maybe these look like a simplistic setup, but there's actually a ton of stuff going on here. And it's all, I'll be the first to admit, it's all complete overkill. Like half this stuff probably, <laughs> probably is not needed to do these videos, but that's the fun with it, playing with this stuff. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we make these videos. So the first part is coming up with the ideas for the videos and actually writing the scripts. And this is really the cheapest part and actually the real part where gear doesn't matter because it's all, it's all in here. Anyway, the cool thing is, is that with the new direction XSplit has taken, going away from just purely, you know, video game streaming to just productivity and content creation, just being creative. That means that there's really this whole just wide world of topics we can cover. Like I can only talk so much about a capture card or streaming settings. Like at a certain point in time, like there's only a bit of knowledge you need when it comes to streaming, especially for just kind of day to day stuff. So we use a task management software called Meister Task to basically brainstorm and list out ideas and then to kind of track the progress of production on each video. So, you know, scripting to filming to editing. And this is not like the best or anything like that. There's tons of stuff like Monday and ClickUp. Chris actually uses ClickUp for organizing his blog content and his videos as well. And pretty much we get to writing. And when I write the video, I actually made a whole video about how to write tutorials. You can find it clicking on one of the links above, but I actually fully script out my videos. And the reason why I do that is because um, it helps me when I actually record the video. So there's not so much me kind of just spitballing and going from the top of the head. It really like puts the information if I write it out myself. So it makes it a bit faster when I'm recording because I'm actually not using a teleprompter when I'm doing this. I like to kind of, you know, have an idea of what I'm going to say before I say it. And so, you know, usually that takes a certain amount of time. It really depends on the complexity of the video. Like if I need to research the topic that I'm talking about, like a piece of gear I'm reviewing or some software I'm going to show you, like I need to, you know, test it out, make sure it works. And that's a good thing. If in the comments you see I do something wrong, something's not right, let me know. I will not say that I am the 100% master of everything streaming or content creation. I'm learning sometimes along with you, but yeah, that's pretty much how the writing process goes. But yeah, anything funny or anything you think we can improve in this whole process, let us know in the comments. So next comes my favorite part, which is actually filming the videos. Even though I'm not like the biggest fan of being on camera, the all the gear setting it up, it's really fun. So what we have is basically like three sets. So there's like Chris's home setup. There's my desk setup that I use for like short form tutorials. And then there's this whole crazy massive YouTube setup, which is what we're going to walk through here. And it's not a actually real massive setup. It's really just a corner in the room. But uh, so first of all, we film all these or I film all these on an FX six. Super, super overkill for YouTube videos. And I don't just use it for YouTube videos. I use it for other stuff throughout my career. But uh, it's really overkill for YouTube videos, but it's also kind of like great because I used to have like all this different components that I would use together to make these videos because I have a microphone that needs phantom power and getting the best codec that doesn't explode my computer. But the FX6 has this has exposure tools, microphone inputs, ND filters, like everything I need to make a video, it's all packed in one instead of setting up like 20 different things. And then the microphone we use is a Sheps microphone. Um, this microphone is great. Like it's semi decent at not picking up too much room noise and especially reverberation, which there's like tile floors here and it's kind of a big open area outside of this. So there's lots of things to reflect. It's not like sound treated in here, but with that clarity comes a price. It picks up like when something makes a sound, it's going to pick it up and it is kind of funky. I actually read that it's not so great and humid stuff. So yeah, we're kind of working it out as time goes and trying to find the best place to work with it. 
And aside from that, we also have a bunch of different lights, as you can see. So the main key light is the 300D. 300D is way overkill for YouTube videos, but it's great at lighting a room and it gets super bright. So sometimes I use it to actually do B-roll shots to light up a product, or if I actually did a tricky kind of like ad video that probably will never get released, but it kind of lit the room in a really interesting way. And then we have a kind of cheap uh, Amaran light that's the, the fill light so it bounces off the wall and fills out the other side of my face uh for the rim light we have a 100x so it's basically like the cheap version of like the 300d 120d line it's actually really great like that's the light you should buy and then we have the modifiers so like the the light dome and the light dome mini um and then we have these cello lights that are the you know rgb lights because you gotta have rgb if you're a gamer actually I should probably like just light up the curtain in the back. That would probably look cleaner. And then we have just some random IKEA practicals and some stage dressing. And I have a headset to monitor some audio and a boom stand. And uh, that's how all this is all configured. And I try and keep it in one place because I don't want to keep setting up the same setup over and over again. Otherwise, it would take me like an hour, hour and a half just to start making a video. Like the point is, sit here, set up takes five, 10 minutes right away. I've already got like, that's another cool thing about the FX6 is that you can basically have presets to dial in settings. So I just set it and forget it really quick, record my stuff, take it over and start editing right away. So let's jump into the editing portion. Oh, so one thing again about filming before we get to editing, sorry, is like I said, the way I structure the scripts is I try and break down paragraphs into some information that I can say in a take. So what I do is I take that portion and I say it until I get a good take and then I cut and then go to the next portion, start filming again. I've seen a lot of YouTubers who just film one long thing and then edit between their mistakes. And um, I used to try that, but, or I used to do that, but I didn't like it because I would spend so much time scrubbing through one long piece of footage that it was actually easier for me to just know that at the end of every clip was the good take. So then I just, you know, cut them all up and drop them in a timeline. It really sucked when it came to syncing, but now that I don't have to do that, it's really fast. But yeah, let's go to editing. So in editing, we used to edit all these videos at 1080p. Actually, some of Chris's videos are 1080p. Um, I film everything in 4K, and since I have a 4K monitor now, uh, I produce all these videos in 4K and 30 FPS. The only reason why I don't do 60 FPS is I don't like the way, like when you do talking head shots, how they look with 60 FPS. It just always looks off to me. And most people can't tell sometimes between 30 and 60 FPS unless it's like gameplay. But yeah, basically I use XSplit Broadcaster to do desktop screen capture when I need to do any like basically software footage or, you know, demo tutorials. And then I edit that all in Premiere and no preference with Premiere. It's just what I picked up first. And uh, we don't really do too much crazy fancy editing because we had to prioritize speed in putting out these videos. Sometimes we have to script, shoot, edit a video and get it done all within two and three days. Has to be really fast turnaround on these and we got to keep consistent flow of content out aside from other videos that we produce for socials and stuff. So we edit them, output them. Sometimes it's 4K, sometimes it's 1080p, depends on where the video is going. And I think editing can take anywhere from a day and a half to half a day. Really depends on the style of content. Um, I would say I try and structure my content to be something that I can get done within two, three days. If it really is a certain type of topic, it might take longer, but just with the schedule and speed of things, we need to get things out. It's better to break up complex things into smaller videos, even though we're not trying to do like the really short tutorials like we did in the past. Also, so when a video is done editing, I pretty much just save the final edited version and then uh, upload that into our online storage. Now I will say when there's like some unique B-roll, especially when I do like a live action B-roll, uh, those things are a bit hard to recreate because you got to reset up the lighting and everything like that. So I try and save that B-roll, but, or also B-roll like kind of demonstrating the product in a unique way because it can take a lot of time to set that up and stage it. Anything that takes time to stage and set up and shoot, I try and save that as a separate file because I might refer to that in a later video and it saves me a lot of time from having to go all the way back and reset it up again, relearn it again, and then push it out. So 
Really helpful tip, if you have unique or special B-roll sh shots, save those, but you know, be careful because 4K footage gets expensive in the sense that it takes up a lot of hard drive space. So that's pretty much how we shoot our videos and get them done. Maybe one day Chris will do a tour of his whole setup and you know, his process and stuff like that. But you know, let us know in the comments, like what do you think? How do you shoot your own videos? Is there anything that we're doing wrong or that we can prove? Let us know. Thanks again for watching. Give a like if this was helpful and share it as well and subscribe for the next time that we're in the studio because we're in the studio now or something like that. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Later.